Hello and welcome to this uh, session on advances in immune tolerance induction and islet encapsulation and new hope for type 1 diabetes. I'm uh, Camillo Ricordi, I'm a professor and director of the Diabetes Research Institute and Cell Transplant Center at the University of Miami. I've been involved in islet transplantation and uh, cell processing from the pancreas since uh, the 80s when we developed the automated method, uh, so-called record the chamber for uh, human islet isolation when I was at Washington University. And then I was, uh, uh, I led the first successful islet transplants, uh, islet allo transplants at the University of Pittsburgh with Dr. Starzl and uh, all the way to the co successful completion of the phase three trial of islet transplantation in type 1 diabetes that was funded by the NIH Clinical Islet Transplantation Consortium, which I had the privilege to chair, <coughs> where I chaired the steering committee for over a decade. So now with the situation in islet transplant transplantation has evolved in a way that uh, is uh, the results are quite uh, remarkable. You can see you can have like a 96% time in range with no severe hypoglycemic episode, which is a reason why islet transplantation are performed with normalization of hemoglobin A1C. So this has been uh, quite remarkable. And now more recently, stem cell derived islets have reached uh, similar results or even better than traditional islet transplants for multi-organ donors. This paper was recently published, showing also that patient survival at 20 years was quite spectacular in islet transplantation, despite the requirement of uh, chronic recipient immunosuppression. However, that remains a challenge, and that's why we're addressing now tolerance induction and encapsulation immunoisolation technology to try to eliminate the need for anti-rejection drugs, which severely limits the applicability of islet transplantation to the most severe cases of uh, type 1 diabetes. So recently, Vertex and many other entities are heavily investing and working on stem cell-derived islets. And uh, we had uh, some spectacular initial results that were first in human success of uh, stem cell-derived islet transplant in type 1 diabetes. Uh, the results were presented at the ESD in Stockholm very recently, showing in this patient, how very unstable uh, metabolic control at baseline was corrected and led to insulin independence uh, with a normalization of hemoglobin A1C to 5.2 at timing and range of 99.9%, which was uh, quite uh, remarkable. To make stem cell derived islets uh, appealing as an unlimited source of insulin producing cells, you of course, you need to do this transplant without immunosuppression. Otherwise, you may not need stem cell derived islets because the small indication would allow just uh, islet transplantation from multi organ donor to be sufficient for the selected patient that may benefit. But if we achieve islet transplantation without immunosuppression, then it will become like a lottery because we don't have enough pancreas to treat all patients that could benefit. And that's why we need. Uh, new technology. So the two pillars in this direction are either islet encapsulation. This is a very recent uh, review from, from uh, 2022, which showed a different kind of uh, nanocapsule, uh, conformal encapsule, microcapsule, macro encapsulation, and, uh, and 3D structure encapsulation, encapsulating insulin producing cells. These are all technology that are based on the concept that you can uh, shield the islets from the immune response by some kind of physical barrier that is uh, semi-permeable, allowing glucose sensing, insulin production and diffusion outside of the capsule, as well as oxygen uh, absorption and nutrient to maintain viability uh, of uh, the islets that are encapsulated, whether it is a macro capsule or in a macro capsule that is a larger device. The challenges are, uh, remain today is that uh, if you develop any kind of uh, fibrotic reaction around the capsule or the macro device, then the, the islets we think can suffer for lack of oxygen and nutrients. And uh, that's also in part hypoxia and lack of nutrients has been why many of this encapsulation technology today have failed to 
produce long-term results in, um, in subjects with type 1 diabetes or in uh, large animal preclinical model systems. So this is a, there is several attempts now to address this. There are new macro devices that are revascularizing with blood vessels that can grow through compartments that are immunoisolated. There are new techniques like a conformal coating, like we're working at the Diabetes Research Institute with Alicia Tomei that is trying to generate a very tiny coating around the eyelids so that the, the diffusion of oxygen and nutrient remains uh, okay. And then there are also tolerance induction uh, protocols, well, like the one that uh, rely on uh, engineering of an intra-abdominal endocrine pancreas in the omentum, and then application of a strategy like fast ligand microgels that have been now published uh, in uh, science advances, even in non-human primates, like showing 100% survival for six months in the absence of chronic recipient immunosuppression that has been quite remarkable because it's the first example of uh, tolerance induction uh, without immunosuppression in non-human primate that uh, will be hopefully translated very soon in um, clinical trials. Uh, this is based on fast ligand-induced apoptosis of the infiltrating uh, uh, effector cells that try to induce uh, and destroy the transplanted islets and also induced regulatory T cells expansion at the transplant site that are responsible for maintenance of tolerance in the long term. There are other trials like uh, uh, anti-CD40 ligand co-stimulatory blocker that have been approved also for clinical testing and will start uh, in, uh, in the United States this year. And uh, so the jury is still out between uh, encapsulation or tolerance induction, but I'm happy that there are so many approaches now being actively pursued. And I, so far, none of them clinically has uh, yielded the long-term results of pilot transplant without immunosuppression, but the path is uh, very promising and I'm looking forward to update you with positive results in the upcoming year. Thank you for your attention and have a great day.